ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد. Now we're going to know a bit about the author of this book. He is none other than a Shaykh al Allama. The word Shaykh is used for two of one. It is used for a person who is old in age and it's also used for a person who is high in knowledge. So here what we mean by is the Shaykh's knowledge was immense and high and also when he died he was 83 years old. Rahimahullah. Al-Allamah. The word Allamah is Sigatul Mubalagha meaning the excessive knowledgeable, like very knowledgeable person. Um, because that Ta' Marbota indicates that. That Ta' Marbota is not feminine. Okay, you can't say Allama. So Sheikh Albani is a mudakkar, he's a male. How can you say Allama? It's a female. Now this ta' marbuta here is meant by it's it's, it's used for Sigatul Mubalagha when you want to go overboard or you not overboard but you want to go high in saying that this person is high in knowledge. Uh, that's what Allama means. It means the one that has a lot of knowledge. Al Muhaddith, the scholar of hadith. Al Imam, al Imam is the one who is followed يُقْتَدَى بِهِ فِي الْخَيْرِ And it's also used for shar as well, evil. If you follow somebody in evil, he's your imam. Uh, and if you follow a person in good, he's also your imam. But here we mean the one that was followed in good. The Sheikh's kunya was Abu Abdul Rahman, meaning he had a son called Abdul Rahman. And he was named after that son of his, Abdul Rahman. So his name was Abu Abdul Rahman, that's his kunya. His actual name is Muhammad. Um, that was his name. His nickname was Nasiruddin. His nickname, his laqab, was Nasiruddin, the man who gave victory to this religion. His father was who? His father was, so his name is Muhammad. His nickname is Nasiruddin Ibn al Hajj, the son of Hajj. So his father was Al Hajj. Um, Hajj Nuh. So his father was Al Hajj Nuh. That was his father's name. And Ibn Najati, Ibn Najati, Ibn Adam Al Ashkudi, Ashkudriyu, Al Albaniyu, Al Arnautiyu. So his name was Muhammad. His nickname was Nasiruddin. His father's name was Al Hajj Nuh. His grandfather was name was Najati. And his great grandfather was Adam. The Sheikh was Al Ashkudriyu. Ashkudri is the capit is the city, uh, I think it's the capital of Albania. I think it's the capital of Albania. The Sheikh, that's his, that was where he was born. And Ashkodra is in English, I think. In English, Arabic is Al Ashkodriyu. And he was Albanian. So Sheikh was Albanian and he's from this place Arnaut. Arnaut is East Europe. If I'm not wrong, I think Al Ashkodra is the capital. If I'm not wrong, maybe it's wrong. Maybe Allah Alam. The Sheikh was born, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the year 1332. Approximately, uh, it would mean that the Sheikh was born World War II. Ghalbani was born World War II, so that means he met the Ottoman Empire. He lived at the time of the Ottoman Empire. So it would be 1000, when was the World War II? 1914. Yeah, 1413, last year's, yeah, so he was born the last years, 1913, last years of it. That was World War I, 1913. Ah, he was born in World War I then. World War I. In Arabic, the Hijriya was 1332. SubhanAllah, now it's 100 years ago. 100 years ago when he was born. Uh, when he was born in that place, his father took him to Sham, specifically Surya, and he was biha, he remained there, Sheikh. So he is what? He's originally what country from? Albania. But in terms of um, cultivation and ra raised and bred, he was where? Sham. Um, he lived his life there and he died where the sheikh died Amman he died in Amman the capital of Jordan 
He died in Amman, the capital of Jordan, the year 1420 Hijriah. So he lived for 83 years, right? He lived تقريبا 83, 82, 82 years. 82, 83 years. تقريبا. Sheikh Al-Bani, Allah, Allah put in his heart the love of Ilm Al-Hadith. حبب الله إليه Allah put in his قلب أم حبب الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put love in his heart towards what? Ilm Al-Hadith, the science of Hadith. The Sheikh started to love it. But this was when? بعد بعد مقالات قرأها لسيد محمد رشيد رضا. He read the book, or, uh, some uh, some notes, or some a newspaper that used to come out called Majallatul Manar, Majallatul Manar, which is a magazine. Uh, it used to come out. Uh, blogs that this man Muhammad Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida used to write things on there, Sheikh Al Albani, which was matters of Hadith and the science of Hadith. So the Sheikh read it and he was amazed with it. He liked it, and from that. He started to like the methodology of hadith and the way the aimat al-hadith were like. So he went and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in his heart love of hadith. Uh, re, when he read these newspapers, he saw this. It pushed him to want to know more about hadith. Sheikh went wholeheartedly into this field. Hatta khalata mashashatahu. Until this matter, ikhwani, it filled up his veins and his bones and his it went in his body uh, ta'ala the sheikh from there he started to have the methodology and the manhaj and the tariq of the people of hadith qawlan wa amalan in terms of knowledge and speech and even in his actions he used to act like the people of hadith he took the methodology of the people of hadith and that's why some of the people who went to sheikh al-albani what they said was when they came back from him we went to a man that we wanted to learn from hadith, but we came back and we learned from him sunnah. We went to take, when we went there to him, we wanted to learn hadith from him, but we came back and we learned the sunnah from him. So this is the type of person he was. And those who met him said, when we saw him, we saw a man from everything of his life, it was just hadith, implementing all the sunnah as much as he could. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, the years he lived, no doubt he had a lot of virtues and a lot of great noble characters. But there was two things he was uniquely at at this era that we lived in. Very, mashallah, well known for. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him out more than the rest in this issue. The first one was, Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah, the way he distinguished this knowledge of hadith for the people and made it easy for the people. The narrations were, were very hard to know what was authentic and what wasn't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this noble shaykh and because of him after Allah, um, the, the hadith was authenticated. So people didn't just read a book and just implement what was in there. But he came and he, he authenticated hadith. To the extent, scholars before him did authentic narrations. But Sheikh Nasr was unique at, he did it to every hadith that came across his way. Every narration that came his way, he put a hukum on it, a ruling on it. That's unique. Other scholars only did what came their way, and that's what they did. But he looked for the narrations, went out of his way, and gave rulings to just about every narration there is out there. Just about. So that's a khasa, that's a virtue, and that's a, that, that took many years of his life. Rahimahullah, he was in this field for 60 years. The first book he authored, he was 20 years old. Ittikhaf al-Sajid. He was 20 years old, and as I said, the Sheikh died at the age of 80 something, 82, 83. So the Sheikh. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wa si'a. 60 years of those precious years of his life What was he doing? He was authenticating So that was one virtue that he had Rahimahullah ta'ala The second thing is His love for the science of hadith And not just the love But pushing the people to implement the sunnah And to stop blind following people That was the second thing Sheikh Nasir was known to tell the people The one whose speech is noble the one whose and actions are infallible from mistakes and that we have to follow is our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Every person, every individual that we know and we see, other than the messenger, his speech is either taken or rejected. And that was a unique thing. He, rahimahullah, with the scholars of his time, he they shared that with him as well. But he was really known for that. Ittiba'u sunnah and athar to follow the sunnah and to follow the athar. 
and to leave off this blind following that covered the Muslim world from all over its corners. Sheikh Nasser fought against that and he pushed the people to what? Sunnah, to follow the Sunnah, the Kitab and the Sunnah and the Athar. He pushed them to it. Sheikh died, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and Ikhwani, when he died, he also died upon the Sunnah. Meaning, even when he was dying, he said that if my children are far and they're not there around, my, around me, I want me to be hastened to my grave. I want, me to, I, want me to, I want myself to be taken to the grave quickly. I don't want no time to be wasted. I want to follow the Sunnah in this issue. Because the Sunnah is that when a person dies, he should not be kept outside longer. He should be rushed to the grave. He requested for this. It was said that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen was told this and he said, the man implemented the Sunnah when he was alive and he implemented it when he died. So that's how he was as an individual, rahimahullah, in his life. We don't want to indulge more into his life because books have been written about it. Books, not one or two, but books have been written about his life. And alhamdulillah, even in English now, some books have been written about his life, so you can go back and read about it.